Welcome to K-Drama School. I'm your host, Grace Jung, and class is now in session. about me i guess i have been uh plugging away working on my book and you know what's interesting about writing a draft is when you know that somebody else is gonna be looking at your work your editing style changes you know and when i say you i mean me of course like i i just noticed that i i find myself cutting out like entire paragraphs if not removing whole chapters as soon as I realize, oh, like, this isn't just for me, somebody else is going to be reading it. So I, I, like, I'm entering that phase of the drafting process. And it's very interesting. What I'm kind of uh, excising out of the book is a lot of the, uh, I don't know, like, woe is me. I'm so sorry for my life. You know, poor Grace Jung, like that kind of shit. I find myself cutting out more and more of that. And I'm trying to like replace it with something. And um, as I was walking back from doing stand up this evening, I realized like, oh, I should insert more gratitude because, you know, we forget like human beings. Oh, God, we are so forgetful. Like two years ago, you guys, the whole world was like literally on fire because millions of people were just dying like by the second just dropping dead all over the world like we just forget we forget and um you know now that like the inflation is you know impacting economies and uh whatever like this and that like all these things to complain about i mean yeah we just we forget how to maintain gratitude but i was like okay maybe that's something i should kind of home in on i should insert more gratitude into my book rather than just like note all the things that i find messed up or wrong about our systems you know because fact is like i'm still alive and i'm healthy and i'm doing all the things that i want to be doing and i have a home i have food you know, like I'm taken care of. So I really, you know, I, I'm actually very grateful right now here in this moment. Now I am very grateful. So I don't know, like, I recommend it. <laughs> I guess I, I recommend um, taking a moment to be mindful of that, of our own gratitude. And, uh, you know, it's okay to still want things, right? Like we can want things and we could want and wish for more things in our lives because we're human beings and we're driven we have goals you know we're artists we have pursuits but i think um that's different from like complaining right and being like i don't have enough it's not that i don't have enough i have plenty i have plenty and it is enough but i i also have goals and i have standards and i have uh, places that i want to be reaching and um and i'm honoring myself by by doing that and by doing the work every day, whatever. I have this that I do every single week. And, you know, it's not perfect every single week. Some weeks, you know, it's missing whole entire monologues. Like I remember in episode 82 with Juzo, like the last 10 minutes of the thing was like cut out and I didn't even realize it. I'm so sorry to my listeners about that. I re-uploaded that whole episode and I re-uploaded the video. The last 10 minutes of that episode is epic. Like Juzo's improv for the flashcard questions of that show is stellar. He's genius. He's brilliant. So I really recommend that you go back and listen to the last 10 minutes of episode 80, 82. And I'm just so sorry that um, like I screwed up with the editing on that. The, doing this podcast every week does give me some kind of consistency. It gives me grounding and it gives me some time and space to reflect on where I am in my life. And if I think about like when I first started this podcast, like a year and a half ago, I guess more than a year and a half ago now, I was feeling so 
nervous and afraid and you know i didn't want to mess up i wanted everything to be perfect and i had like such high standards for myself and so much pressure blah 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 and i'm just like wow you know i don't know why i put so much pressure on myself like that because um i'm the one that's in charge of making this and i could make it however i please you know and if it's not gonna have a monologue one week that's fine you know i, I still did it i still uploaded an episode you know if i don't have a guest for that week that's fine too i still uploaded an episode and it's really it's more about the ritual of doing this work rather than like making everything perfect and whatever you know and I, and I understand if like some listeners find that upsetting because it may be inconsistent like that. And, you know, I know every listener comes to my podcast for different reasons. And if you come to my podcast specifically just to hear the uh, monologue and the flashcard based on a K-drama, I totally understand. But also know that like the K-drama school title is more of a gimmick and the K-drama that you're witnessing is my drama. Okay, so it's really, it's like, it's this, uh, it's a dual thing. So I don't know, I, I guess I just want to put that out there because um, I don't want people to be like, well, what the hell is this? You know, like um, I was expecting one thing and I got another. So just know that like, you know, this is, this is also a, a form of artwork, like art project that I have, and it's going to be evolving. I don't know what it's going to look like, you know, in the next episode or, or the episodes there thereafter, like it's constantly going to be evolving. It's going to be changing. And um, part of that is also just circumstantial because like, I don't have a production team. Like I do it all alone. I do it by myself. Right. Um, if I had a producer who can do like, you know, quality checks and like, you know, uh, make the scheduling and edit the thing and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, it would be so much easier, but fact is, it is a lot of work and I do it alone and I am doing my best. So just know that, just know that. And I also keep my listeners in mind as I do this. So um, I appreciate your uh, listenership and I appreciate um, your feedback and all of that. Again, if you have a show that you want me to cover, just email me or, you know, comment in on YouTube or comment um, like in the comment box on my social media. Um, and I will, I will do my best to get to that. Okay. I probably won't do every single request ever, but just put in a request. Maybe it maybe it lands with me, you know, because like there are plenty of shows that I've seen that I forgot about that I, you know, probably never covered, you know, so just, um, feel free to, uh, do that. Lately, I haven't been watching a lot of Korean dramas, if I'm honest with you. I've been on a Hulu kick, and I've been catching up on Hulu and HBO shows. I've been, like, catching up on Barry. I've been catching up on Bob's Burgers. I'm obsessed with Bob's Burgers. Like, I really hope that one day I can do voiceover acting for a character on Bob's Burgers. Like, that is a dream of mine. Like, I really hope I can do that someday. All right, the show I'm going to talk about today is called Jealousy Incarnate. It is a 2016 drama. It is also called Don't Dare to Dream on some other platforms, but it's an SBS drama. It came out in the year 2016. It is a very uh, bizarre show, but it is, um, it's a rom-com. It is set at a news station. It is like, a, how do you say? It's like a fictionalized version of SBS, okay? So I have a friend that I went to graduate school with and she used to work as a producer for the TV, um, like TV documentary department at SBS years ago. And she told me that some of the characters in Jealousy Incarnate were based on actual news anchors at SBS. And I was like, that makes a lot of sense. Um, this show is written by Seo Su Kyang, and she is known for some very big uh, shows, some big hits. Pasta from the year 2010, that's a big one that she's known for. She's also known for Miss Korea. I know I covered Miss Korea on one of my earlier podcast episodes. I love that show to death. I know one of our listeners has seen Pasta and really disliked it. Uh, if you didn't like Pasta, you're, you're probably not going to like um, uh, Jealousy Incarnate because um, in both Pasta and Jealousy Incarnate, the male protagonist is such an asshole. I mean, he is like hateful. 
he's hateful, all right? So in uh, Jealousy Incarnate, you have this guy named Hashin. He's played by Cho jung Suk, and Cho jung Suk is, I love Cho jung Suk. I think he's an amazing actor. He's done a lot of theater. He's done like musicals. Even in this show, Jealousy Incarnate, in the last episode, you see Cho jung Suk like singing and dancing. Like this guy loves to sing and dance. He's like, he's like the Hugh Jackman of Korea. <laughs> And um, he's married to a very famous singer named Komi. So that's that. But Cho jung Suk, he's a phenomenal actor. And he's very good at playing a fucking cock-sucking asshole in Jealousy Incarnate. He is just despicable, so mean. But he also, um, yeah, like he also has like his shortcomings that he's aware of. And he's dealing with it, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's satisfactory in that he is a flawed character who is like coming to awareness of his flaws let's put it that way okay so he's not like an asshole like through and through from beginning to end like no there is some there's a change that he goes through and there's some processing and you know whatever the part that upset me about both pasta and jealousy incarnate is that uh kong hyojin's character the actress kong hyojin she's in both of those shows um she is like in love with what a cruel dick of a person he is that's what i don't like that part i find problematic and i find it toxic but i also understand Kong Yujin, that's my problem i understand why you're into it <laughs> but it's not healthy it's not okay it's not good okay my guest today is killian mccassey he is a la-based comedian and he's originally from boston he is a very funny comic um he tells this bit about how he's like always attracted to like witches and stuff i find that so hilarious um i really am a fan of killian's artwork if you want to follow him on instagram it's killian underscore mick sassy and um you can follow him on instagram and check out his art and it's really really uh it's very how do i say it's it's very stylistic it's um very funny and absurd um it's kind of like touching on borderline like gross humor, um, like kind of like that hyper realist, like excessive humor in a way, like um, some of the imagery is like very freakish. You know what it reminds me of? You know, like uh, like in the first two, three seasons of SpongeBob, in every episode of SpongeBob, you get like a still close up shot of a character and it's like hyper realist painting when i was sort of monitoring this episode and i was monitoring our interview i realized like i was talking way too much that's something i'm trying so hard to not do when i'm like having my conversations with my guests but i was talking so much i was like oh my god grace shut the hell up um you know like i i was like lecturing him at times and you know some of that just comes from the fact that like i am older than he is you know <laughs> and you know i have a younger brother and like that's just how i roll sometimes um but yeah like i think my intention was so that i could get him to believe in himself and see his talent for what it is and you know see him for who he who he really is and things like that but i think it just came off a bit too luxury at times so that's something to just kind of like you know like take this interview with a grain of salt i suppose is what i mean and also just know that like i'm also you know a work in progress and i'm also working on trying to be more aware of that and like you know self-aware and like trying to like just pulling back on that shit a little bit it's hard as hell like even today i met up with a friend who's younger and a guy and like fuck the problems that he has and it was like giving me a headache and i was like starting to like tell him like okay like he told me that he drinks three coca-colas a day and i was like you can't do you can't do that you can't do that like if you drink three coca-colas every single day you're gonna end up in the emergency room and that's what ended up happening he ended up in the emergency room right and like we were just having this long conversation about food and diet and health and la 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 and it's just like i you know i have to realize that i am not a healer like i am not a he i don't identify as a healer okay i'm just some person's friend right if, if we're friends that we're on equal planes we're on equal terms 
there's no hierarchy nobody's better than the other right and like i just gotta stop doling out advice you know even even if i think what i think is correct and true and even though the intention is for betterment and wellness all around me yeah fine whatever it doesn't matter you know it just it comes off as a bit assholey and i'm trying not to be so assholey i suppose so that's just you know i'm being vulnerable right now i'm being real with you i'm leveling with you right now <laughs> i genuinely uh respect killian i respect him as a comic i respect him as an artist and i you know found a lot of his insights really funny and interesting uh, and, um, yeah, genuinely enjoyed this conversation. And I also respect, you know, how good of a sport he is, you know, for dealing with, <laughs> for dealing with the, the talk, the discussion that we had, because it's, it's not an easy conversation to have, you know, once you open yourself up and get vulnerable and get down to the nitty gritty, you know? So like, I'm, I'm down with the fact that he was down. Let's put it that way. So let's talk to the very funny and talented Killian Bacassi. Yeah, I'm very ill-equipped. <laughs> yeah, I had what's a laptop. With the, yeah, what happened to your computer? Uh, my ex-girlfriend sat on it. Oh, my God. Is that why you broke up with her? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> yeah, no, she sat on it. And there is also like a little bracelet in between the screen and the keyboard. So it just oh popped it. Gosh. Yeah, it wasn't even really her fault, but. it um, Okay. Was it your bracelet or her bracelet? It was a bracelet she had given me. Oh my God. Yeah. And uh, okay. And, and it was there because why? I have no idea. I have no idea. It was one of those, um, the evil eye bracelets that Mexican evil eye, I forget what they're called. Oh, wow. Something with an I. I mean, it's with an a, M. It's an evil eye bracelet, and that's supposed to protect you, and it smashed your computer to smithereens. It, it did. Okay. Real Black Mirror episode. <laughs> Wait. So, um, okay. So, so you're saying this, you're saying that this, uh, you were saying in jest that this contributed to the breakup. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This was okay. months. This is almost like a year ago or something. It's almost a year ago. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Okay. Fascinating. Fascinating. Yeah. I'm sorry about your laptop. And, and computers are expensive, actually. They are. I need to get one though, because like I always talk about how it's like, oh, I want a work from home job, and I don't even have a laptop. So I'm like, well, that's I need one of those. You need to invest in one immediately. Yeah. 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 They're not that expensive. They're like a grand, right, for an iBook Mac. An iBook, yeah. For an I've... iBook, it's about a grand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you yeah, can do yeah. buy it on credit. Uh huh. You can absolutely buy it on credit. And um, in fact, I think you know, Apple, Apple used to uh, have a relationship with, um, Buckin. I forget this credit card company, but that was like my first credit card ever out of college. I was buying a new MacBook, and Apple was like, "Would you like a credit card?" I was like. Okay, yeah. And uh they yeah, gave me a credit card. And then I was like in debt for like years after that. But good way to build credit. It is. Uh it is. It is. I mean, that's really the only way, truly. Do you have credit cards? I do. I have one and then okay. I have a car loan. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Both of those things count. You know, I actually, you know, this is common, I guess, among comedians. It's not that uncommon, but like there's one comic who's in his 40s and he does not have a credit card and he does not have a credit line. I feel him. That shit sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like fully American. You know, there's like no yeah. reason why. I mean, I know immigrants have better credit than he does, but yeah, it, it was just baffling i was like wow is he serious but yeah it's the case it's very common among comedians male comedians especially it's oh yeah well it's just because it sucks it doesn't there's no logical i mean there's logic to it where you need it to like if you want to own anything but yeah fucking like you explain credit to anyone and they're like why the fuck would i do that why why can't i just use my own money mm. why do i have to borrow some fucking co company's money yeah 
to pay so I can get these artificial points. Yeah. You know. Hey. Hey, sorry. So you moved. I did. I wondered if this would work better. You're closer to your modem? Uh, no, I'd have to go in Terrence's room to do that. In Terrence's home? No. <laughs> Is anybody home? No, they're all at work. I'm, it's my day off today. You're the only person at home and the Wi-Fi sucks right now? Yeah, I live in a shithole. Oh, is that why the Wi-Fi is shit? Because you live I in a guess. shithole? I don't know. It's always been fucking uh, real, like, touch and go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe being near the modem will help. Maybe. You know, I've been uh, really enjoying your artwork lately. I really liked oh, the, uh, the Mother's Day or your mom's birthday post. I thought that was really funny. Um, yeah. Are you like thinking about maybe releasing like a chapbook or a comic book? Maybe a book with just a bunch of cartoons in it or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to make t-shirts or like all the other fucking ways people make money with that stuff. Um, yeah. It's because I have no interest in it. But uh, yeah, maybe it's some type of little book and everything else. I don't know. I to think me, it's I'm... not worth it if you don't have a big following, though. Really? I don't know. Yeah. Because I made those mugs and they were they were sold pretty well, but it's like I don't make that much money and like just the hassle of fucking shipping it. If it was all in L.A., it would have been much easier, but it's all people, you know, in Boston and shit that want them and whatever. Mm-hmm. So. I feel like I feel like there are ways around that, you know. Yeah, there is. I mean, I found I kind of found a hack to it that saved me money, but it was still just a pain in the ass. Mm, you just don't want to do it. Well, I do it if it just if it was made more money. I'm not making that much money. Yeah. You know, and I can't sell a mug for like 20 bucks. I mean, 15 is asking a lot in general. So you think so? I think so. Yeah. Hmm. I think you should be a little bit more generous to yourself. Because see, what you're doing right now is you're complaining that you're not getting enough money, but you're also like, I can't, I feel like I can't charge them that much money. You see what I'm saying? There's a huge yeah, but, contradiction but the, there. You get a mug for 20 bucks. I mean, it flat if I just gave it to you, but then you got to pay another eight bucks in shipping. It's like, let me, that seems let me crazy. Give you, let me give you some context. There's a mug that Mark Marin sells, and he sells it for forty-five to fifty dollars a pop. Yeah, but actually, he's Mark Marin. He he doesn't even sell it. Actually, he doesn't sell it. It's um, it's well for okay. You're saying it's Mark Marin, right? You're saying yes. it's Mark Marin. Like he, you think he is worthy of selling a forty-five dollar mug? Yeah. Why? Because he's has uh he's good at stuff he's kind of following he's he's, he's good at know. stuff and he has a following you don't think you're good at stuff i think i'm good at stuff but like i haven't i don't think i've done enough to sell a 50 dollar mug you know what i mean why would someone buy a 50 dollar mug from me i i mean that's i'm a nobody that's, that's, a, that's a okay see you're predetermining all of these things for yourself. You're saying, I'm a nobody. I mm -hmm. don't deserve $50. I don't deserve to sell a $50 mug when pieces of shit all around the world sell mugs for $50 to however much more. You know, the mugs that Mark Marin sells, he doesn't even sell it. It's the potter who makes the mugs. He's a ceramics artist in Oregon who makes the mugs. And he has Mark Marin's face on it and he sells them for $45 to $50. So this guy isn't even selling like, I mean, he's selling his own original artwork and the mug is beautiful, but it's, it, he's sort of writing off the coattails of Mark Marin. What I'm saying is- Yeah, but he's making the mugs and they're he nice. He is making the These mugs. These are stock white Yes, that's mugs, true. You know? He's making the ceramics. <laughs> But aren't you also making the mugs? I mean, isn't the reason why they're buying the mug for the artwork? I guess. I mean, they just say I'm going to kill myself on them. Yeah. And you made that original artwork. Sure. Yeah. This is something, this is something that I keep um, 
butting heads with you whenever I talk to you about your artwork. It's like you <laughs> seem to have a self-loathing about your work, which I find weird because and 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 I also find it weird that you keep saying I don't have a following. You know, it's like, do you do art for the following and for the money? Like, is that what is do you have like this rock and roll fucking mentality behind it? Yeah, I want money. You I want, want money, money. You want money, a following, you want bitches, you want groupies. Yeah. That's what you want. Why would I do this? Why would I do any of this shit? Oh. For self-expression. Really? Is that that's true? For fuck I mean, no, but um because I could because if I was just doing it for a following, I'd just crank out these fucking horseshit, you know, web comics about mental health or some okay. nonsense every day, you know. Okay. But you're also saying, well, I don't have a following at the same uh-huh. time. So yeah. that you're saying you're complaining about the fact that you don't have a following. You feel like there is a way to get followers, but you're not gonna do it because you feel like that's horse shit. It is. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's why you're not getting anywhere with your fucking artwork, man. You're <laughs> full of contradictions. You, I know. You're complaining and you're deciding to sit in, you know what's hilarious right now? Okay, I know you dated a lot of witches and like Wicca bitches, right? Yeah. Is the is your is your current girlfriend also a witch? I don't have a girlfriend right now. Oh, that's the ex, the one that broke your laptop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry to that's bring okay. up That's okay. It's a good wounds. thing. Was she a witch? Well, I guess she was. She, she gave you. She a... wasn't a witch. She, but she did believe in like astrology and all that shit. Okay, and, that's why she gave you that of, bracelet. Yeah. A lot okay. of Mexican mysticism and stuff. Got it. Got it. Very good. Okay. So right before I came into this Zoom meeting. And, and so far, the internet has been much better. So nice. Yeah. Um, thank you for moving into Terrence's room. Thank you, Terrence, for letting us yeah. Um, Right before I came into the Zoom meeting, I was doing a tarot card reading for, just for myself. I just do it for fun, you know, just to kind of... And I kept getting swords, like two of swords, ten of swords. Swords are not good symbols in general. Mm-hmm. There, I mean, there's no such thing as good or bad, but it's like swords represent challenges, okay? So two of swords, for instance, represents their two thoughts, but can't make a decision, indecisiveness. That's what two of swords means. 10 of swords means challenge. Like you're in the shits. It's like, this is the absolute worst. You know, you're at the, the cliff, the pinnacle, and you will probably fall, you know, the, the end the end times that's what it symbolizes and then i got uh, uh, i think five of swords or six of swords whatever it doesn't matter there's more swords but all of them represent challenges yeah mm-hmm. and i was like i don't know why i'm getting a bunch of sword cards right now because i'm not feeling particularly uh challenged or devastated and now i'm realizing why i got them it's because i i was talking to you i'm about to talk <laughs> to you <laughs> yeah yeah i'm the swords baby you're the sword you know, yesterday I met up with, um, do you know? No, but I heard his name. Comic. I think he's from Orange County originally. He's been doing comedy for a very long time. Very funny guy and nice person. But uh, yesterday he, I was like thinking about him, you know, he's just kind of on my mind. I was like, I haven't seen in a minute. And then he emailed me about some work thing. And then he was like, oh, I'm in, I'm in Van Nuys, like at this comic book store. I was like, oh, that's near where I live. So I stopped by the store and he is not doing well right now. Like he knocked up some lady. This is going to be a second <sighs> kid. He's broke as shit. He's in his mid forties. You know, his, his financial situation is a fucking mangled mess. He's not happy, not doing well. Right. Just unhappiness, sadness all around. And he's also like at the moment, he has quit comedy at this moment Mm -hmm. and um he was kind of talking similarly to the way you're talking you know it's like well you know i mean i want this i want that but i can't you know and it's yeah what's the what's the point of doing that is my question i don't i couldn't tell you i don't know you know i have a friend who um I mean, it's an anxiety thing, really. You have anxiety, right? Yes. It's an anxiety thing. It's like uh, the mind will decide preemptively to be unhappy 
so that it can avoid disappointment. And right. you're locked in this loop, a mental loop of perpetual sadness and grief and despair and cynicism so that you will, it's a fear response really, so that you will always avoid uh, disappointment or, or rejection, right? Or failure, yeah? But the thing is, it's a, it's this endless sort of uh, bottomless pit, you see? Because it doesn't help you to do the thing, yeah? It gets in the way. All you have to do is do the thing, but you give attention to the, the preemptive fear and then you stop. Yes. Yeah. Well, good thing about my ex-girlfriend is she got me to go to therapy and because I hated myself. I didn't know how much I fucking hated myself. You didn't know how much you hated yourself? You can't no. hear it the way that you're talking right now? I didn't, but also, so I think part of my problem is like a cultural problem because my family is very bad with money and uh. and our, like, uh, we're constantly doing, I feel like my family is always constantly doing stuff for friends and everything for free. Like, yeah. just like it was uh -huh. like a community kind of yes. thing. Yeah. So like right now, it's not a lot of people asking me for my stuff who I don't know. If it was someone I don't know, I would be way more inclined to be like, yeah, fucking fucking way more okay. money. Yeah. But it's but because and I know this is how you have to start. Yeah. Is with people. But I feel I feel uh, uh, full of shit if I charge someone a certain amount of money because you, you know don't think mean? you deserve it. I guess. But also. I don't think any, I think the cost of everything is fit. I don't know. It's, it's, it's like, uh, that's bottom line. You just don't think you deserve it. Do you know yeah, why, probably, do, you know, do you know why, uh, financial investors make so much money? Cause they're psychos. Yeah, kind of, but it's cause they're disconnected from, you know, that feeling of guilt and shame around money. Yeah. But underneath it, it does affect them in a way so yeah in a way yeah like you're right it is a mental illness but what you're also describing right now is also a form of mental illness you know sure like uh fear shame guilt around finances is it's a form of the poverty mentality is what they call it it's a form of <laughs> yeah it's a form of mental illness. And I understand that that whole barter system that you're describing, like a smaller town, smaller community, everybody feels like family, everybody feels like kin, you go around doing favors for one another, you know, and um, yeah, it's like, oh, I feel terrible about charging money. But it's like, well, our system is still based on a finance, like a financial system, you know, that's still part of our system. And it's like, if it means my survival, then I should do what it takes to survive. But yeah, as you say, if you have this uh, self-hatred like deeply seated in you, then you will never be able to say like, oh, I, I need to charge this amount of money if it means my survival, because that's mm -hmm. the default, like that's always there. But it's good that you have the awareness at least, you know, that you know, you're working on it with your therapist. That's great. Yeah, it's helping. Yeah. I think, you know, you should maybe uh, try to power through the whole um, guilt and shame and just start charging people money. Like I, yeah. I did uh, experience this last year. I totally know what you're feeling. Um, I experienced this last year when I when I, I did a GoFundMe campaign for my short film because I got screwed from UCLA and it was like a big invoice and I couldn't pay it because blah, blah, blah. And it was not a substantial amount of money. It was $3,000 that I needed. And I raised it in like three days, real fast. And the, the shame and the guilt and the feeling of unworthiness of it was driving me insane. Like I couldn't stop crying hysterically. And, you know, I was like, wow, I'm really fucked up when it comes to my sense of self-worth and I'm really fucked up when it comes to money. And I'll tell you this, there were strangers who contributed for sure. But there were also mm -hmm. friends of mine in my network, a lot of comedians, and you and I both know a lot of comedians don't have a lot of money. A lot of them contributed, you know? So 
you have to know that people within your community and within your close network, they are the ones that are going to be helping you out the most. Yeah, and I'm getting to a place where I'm kind of starting to be better about that shit. I for I don't know. I've fucking trying to be more industrious and uh, just churn shit out there. Yeah, stand up makes it fucking difficult to get the art stuff because I'm out all the time. Yeah, I do stand up all the time. Okay, so. So it just eats up a lot of time. I work all day and then I go out all night and then. Yeah, that's true. It's it's yeah. exhausting, but you know, it's you enjoy it when you're doing like when you're illustrating, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So then, if it means that much to you, then you have to set aside the time and do it. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't take that long, does it? Like what, like thirty minutes an hour? Isn't that all you mm, need? It can take a while. Oh, really? It takes longer. Yeah, it can take a while depending on what because it's like I'm not like formally trained so a lot of stuff I have like uh, certain perspective drawings and everything I kind of really have to like Mm -hmm. play around with and uh, like figure out how to make it work and everything it's I I, I don't have like I don't have certain technical abilities that Mm -hmm. would make it easier to Mm -hmm. to turn out some stuff Hmm. Hmm. Certain technical abilities. Okay, I see. Hmm. Okay. And I'm distracted all the time. So. Yeah, because you live with a lot of people. I do, and they're always out and about watching TV and shit. Yeah. So sometimes I'd go to my coffee shop and draw, but yeah, you know, that's a yeah. whole thing. <laughs> Wow. Why did your girlfriend leave you, Killy? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, it's, yeah, she's, I mean, she's the one, the first time we broke up, she's the one who told me I hated myself. I'm like, That's fucking, what do you know? <laughs> well, I mean, like attracts like, yeah. If you hate yourself, you're going to attract a lady who hates herself. That's how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, she had a lot of confidence. Sometimes I would say okay. too much. Mm. Confidence or arrogance? Uh, oh, I guess arrogance. That's I used to confuse those all the time. I always thought being confident was being arrogant. Oh. Mm-hmm. Big difference. It's that fucking dumb Irish modesty mentality. Mm. Like I'm an artsy little freak, but I dress, I, I will not... And I am attracted to women who are like, you know, fucking septums and tattoos. And, yeah. but I don't, I dress very, uh, for the most part, I dress really normal because I can't, I don't want to be a spectacle all the time, you know? Uh huh. You don't, you don't want to be a spectacle, huh? No. But you, but are, I love attention. Yeah. You are a comic. Yeah. 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 Mm. I think you have a sense of time and place for yes performance yeah 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 mm-hmm. yeah i see fascinating fascinating <laughs> you are know we actually, talk about like korean dramas yeah no i mean the irish and the koreans are actually very similar you know they they deal with similar kinds of shame they deal with similar kinds of rage yeah a lot mm-hmm. of repressed uh fucking darkness there that's why the irish and the koreans they both drink a lot you know um yeah koreans will drink like they have a death wish because they all want to die yeah really Mm -hmm. i didn't know the koreans were drinkers no statistically this is like world stats statistically south korea has the highest suicide rate and they have the highest alcohol consumption rate despite all this they do not diagnose alcoholism as a disease (laughs) oh shit so it's a yeah all kinds of problems over there but um yeah a lot of severe repression a lot of trauma you know the irish have a lot of trauma too you know with like fucking brutality you know invasions like Mm -hmm. oppression from foreign governments um and that's something south well not all of the whole korean peninsula is very familiar with brutality oppression invasion bombing shooting killing all of that so yeah they think drinking will help them and of course they try art but then they have all the self-loathing 
plaguing them in their heads, you know? They put a crazy amount of pressure on themselves, don't they, too? That's what yeah. I heard. Just, Just like uh, you do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Damn. I don't even need to see my therapist tomorrow. You just already say the things she says. Yeah. No, you should still see your therapist. I'm not a therapist. I'm just, um, <laughs> I'm just me, but yeah, uh, I think, um, you know, I like, I can relate though. I can relate to like that chorus of like, you know, I can, cause, and it's, I'm not fully recovered from it at all. Not by any means, you know, I'm a work in progress as we all are. And, you know, you are too, like you're, you're in the work progress mode. You're not at all like, uh, a lost cause by any means. I don't think of you that way. Like sometimes when I'm painting, cause I, I like, I like painting acrylics. Sometimes when I'm painting, I have that in my head. Like, I feel like I'm working through something. Like one time I was painting this thing and I was, for some reason I kept thinking about like high school. Like, I don't think about high school almost ever, but for some reason that day I was thinking about high school so much and like, difficulties I dealt with in high school and stuff do you go through that when you're drawing at all with high school uh no I feel very present when I'm drawing it feels good oh yeah that's so, and that's okay. uh not a usual occurrence in my life I'm very fucking all over the place but when I if so, I'm in the okay. zone drawing yeah, yeah skating and drawing I if that's going good yeah and I'm moving then yeah and it's it's very fucking meditative that's your alignment thing then yeah yeah then you should draw every day Killian I yeah yeah mm -hmm. Re no really like commit to it like give that to yourself you know that could be a form of self-love thing be like oh you know what like this is when I am the most present and most at peace so I am going to commit to doing that for myself every single day right even if it's an hour because sometimes like you say that it takes hours, right? Sometimes when you're working on something, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Sometimes it's like, I can't spend hours on one fucking project. I could spend 20 minutes today or I could spend one hour today or I could spend 30 minutes today, but I'm going to do that. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's hard to break out, like make that decision because I feel like it's one project. I got to finish it now in one sitting. Right. That's pressure. Rather than mm -hmm. doing that, I'd be like, I can give myself a 20 minute reprieve today and work on this for 20 minutes and then I'll come back to it tomorrow. It's still going to be here tomorrow. You know, maybe try that. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to do that with writing because I don't, I have trouble writing because it's hard for me to focus. Yeah. But, you know, I, I try to set these goals like, oh, I'm going to write for an hour. And it's like, you can't write for five minutes. So why would you start with an hour? <laughs> like try to write for 20 minutes a day. Yeah. And then once that gets easier, you know, bump it up over time or something, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. I think it's because you say, I'm going to write for an hour. Yeah. So you're, you're setting that pressure up already, right? Yeah. I'm going to write for an hour. It's like, you know, you see a lady and you're like, I'm going to marry this woman. And this is our <laughs> first yeah. date, right? What the fuck <laughs> kind of pressure is that for yourself? No way. No way, <laughs> man. It's insanity. Uh, let me ask you this. I saw this. Um, I'm, I'm doing some research. Let's put it that way. When you when you uh, let's say you meet a chick, like let's say you're out at a bar and you're like drunk, you're just having fun. Right. And mm -hmm. you see a chick. She's really attractive at the bar. Right. And let's say you guys end up hooking up. Let's say you, you guys fuck that night. Sure. The next day. Are you going to be calling her relentlessly asking for another date? no probably no mm -mm. <laughs> can I ask why not um calling her rel relentlessly the next day yeah yeah like you want to go out with her yeah yeah probably not like crazy but if it was a fun time I'd definitely like you know later sometime be like I don't know what she's doing <laughs> Like, 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 oh, I wonder what she's doing. I wonder if she's down to fuck again, or I wonder if she's down to like have a nice dinner with me and like, you know, potentially be my girlfriend. Like, would you think like in, in that, that way? It would depend on how we hit it off. Mm. Well, I'm telling you how you hit it off. You guys, you guys met at a bar and then you hooked up. It was a drunken fuck fest of a night. 
then my mind probably wouldn't go to date and girlfriend. <laughs> I don't know. But is that weird? Does that surprise you? It's not weird. It's not at all. No, I, yeah. I, I'm asking like honest answers. That's why that's why I asked. That's why I said it's research. Because yeah. um, I, I, I'm, there's this um, trend in K-dramas right now, like starring, like featuring 30 something year old women like mid to late 30s okay and in all of them these bitches will go out get shit face drunk hook up with a random guy and then that guy can't get enough of this lady like he's like <laughs> so determined to not not hook up with her again that's like the last thing on this character's mind he wants to like take her out to dinner get to know her marry her you know it's like that so Obviously, that's a projected fantasy from a lady writer, okay? Uh, and I'm just like, okay, but this is the reality. Like, when a guy finds a drunk bitch at a bar and fucks her brains out, like, is he going to think, oh, this is the girl, too? Yeah, I would be wary of a guy who is all about that. <laughs> okay. I don't think he'd be a solid dude. I think he'd be a fucking weirdo. <laughs> or desperate as fuck yeah yeah perhaps. that's like little kid shit that's like if you like i had my heart broken when i was like i wasn't a little kid but i was fucking you know wasn't mm -hmm. uh that experience but mm -hmm. this one of the first girls that i hooked up with in boston i had she lived in the floor below me she was wow. a witch and uh <laughs> uh yeah it was pretty cool and but i was such a fucking naive little dork yeah i couldn't understand that it was just this cool thing oh i can hook up my neighbor we're friends blah 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 uh -huh. i was like no she's my girlfriend now and then <laughs> i was like way too about it and uh she pretty much ghosted me and uh oh. i was fucking oh that hurt but oh. um but yeah now i'm like well yeah because you had you ruined a good thing by being a fucking dweeb you know oh wow so Wait, you think you were wrong in that situation? Yes. Really? She could have been like more forward with it, but I but yeah. Wow, okay. See, now we're getting to the bottom of something. Cuz from my pers from my perspective, your response was um on point. Like people think in contemporary society people think that having meaningless disconnects disconnected sex is normal and personally i don't find that normal at all i find that i find that psychotic i find that similar to like investment banker kind of level of you know disconnected from one's own humanity you and I, i'm assuming you were a virgin when you hooked up with this witch lady mm -hmm. yeah okay so that was probably also like amped up amped up all the yeah okay but um no like that kind of pure sort of connection and wanting more of that connection and wholesome sort of like romantic togetherness i think that's i don't think that's anything incorrect or something to be ashamed of or yeah i think that's totally fine I think maybe you should embrace that more. Um, mm. Maybe, you know, like on her end, it was just, she wasn't receptive to it. Let's put it that way. She was, she was more like, no, like I just, you know, he's like this kid upstairs. I'm just going to bone him, whatever. I'm bored, whatever. I'm horny, whatever. It was probably like that. Whereas for you, it was like a little bit more like, oh, this is like a thing. Like this is like a romantic connection, like blah, blah, blah. But I don't think either people were, incorrect in the scenario i think you, you were just in different head spaces at the time but i don't think your 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 reaction was uh wrong or bad or crazy or anything i don't think it was wrong i think it was naive but potentially yes but i think even to use this this expression naive it's so funny you say naive right now like just two days ago i was like i don't think i like this word naive you know because it's like saying somebody's stupid for being innocent and or young, like youthful, you know, and it's like, oh, yeah, but I was like 21, 22. Yeah, that's that's still youthful. 21, 22 is youthful. 
I guess. Yeah. Yeah. People were fucking starting families when they were 22 back in the day, though. They back had gone in the to day. War. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. They got the war. Yeah. And started families and businesses. You're not from the 1800s, though. Yeah. I know, but I feel like yeah. fucking culture today is in such a rested development. These 27 year olds being like, I'm just a kid. It's like, no, you're a full grown adult. Get your fucking shit together. Wow. Aren't you in your late 20s? I'm 28. Yeah. 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 And Ease I, up I, on I, yourself. I, I just hate the constant. Americans just constantly pat each other on the back and go, oh, it's okay. You're doing great. And it's, it's, I think it's bad. I don't think. Why it's is that bad? Because fucking life is tough. Just go, just toughen up. People need to toughen up, I think. What, is, what does toughen up mean? Oh, just. Uh, just be cruel on yourself. Yeah. Beat yourself until you're numb to the feelings. No, I don't know. It's like, I didn't know how to get a car loan. I don't know. I, that's a bad example. Yeah. But this, like, no, that's not a bad example at all. You didn't know how to get a car loan. Who fucking knows how to get a car loan? And a lot ever. of people. I feel like you think, you like think, you think a person just like from birth or whatever, they just know how to get a car loan? No, but I feel like at my age, people, most people I know do. So it's you think it's, most people you know do? Do your roommates know exactly how to get a car no, loan my right roommates now? Are stupid comics? Oh They're not, wow, like, real people. Okay, yeah, you need to stop judging your roommates as stupid comics because every time you judge them as stupid comics, you're judging yourself as a stupid comic. Yeah, and. You, and don't make these generalizations. Americans pat themselves on the back for this and that and everything's okay and they need to toughen up. You shouldn't do that either. That's a generalization. You're projecting outward, but you're talking shit about yourself. You think <laughs> you need to toughen up. You think, yes. you think you're stupid for not, for not knowing how to get a car loan. But ultimately you did. You were able to get this car loan and work it out, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, it was your first time doing it. Of course you didn't know. Of course you felt lost and afraid during the time, but you still did it. Now that you did it, you know how to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That is something to pat yourself on the fucking back for. Why Why say Americans pat themselves on the back? That Shut up. Shut up, man. That's so like, that's naive. I would say that's naive. I think uh, people have, again, they have this misconception that like, Beating yourself up till the point that you're numb to any emotion, that's savagery. You know, like, I don't know. Were you beaten as a kid? Like, did you? No. No? Really? Mm -mm. That's interesting. Very okay. nice parents. Very loving, supportive parents. Okay. So you, ha you had more of like a progressive sort of Irish American family. I, I want to say progressive, but they weren't, you know, they were like, they were good parents. They were not child abusers is what you're saying. No. Okay. Yeah. I grew up in a culture and time where I got my ass beat all the time mm -hmm. since like age four, you know, yeah. for not knowing math, they would beat the shit out of me for drawing a certain way with a certain color. Oh, beat the shit out of me <laughs> for just beat, beat the shit out of me all the time. Right. And that made me feel perpetually afraid of being wrong in any uh -huh. instance. Okay. Why do you think I got a fucking PhD? That well, it's the, now you got a PhD though. Do you think I feel any smarter that I have a PhD? You should. You got your doctor. No, the thing about the thing about academia and learning is the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know anything. That's yeah. that's the fact about studying. That's why academics are so insecure, and that's uh -huh. why they're so intense because they don't want to be found out. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, like a lot of people think they're stupid, right? I think I, the reason I was talking about the child abuse thing is at a certain point after I was getting my ass beat all the time, there was a certain point where I stopped crying. It is normal to cry when somebody's injuring you physically, when they're physically harming you and you're a child and it hurts, it's normal to cry, okay? But there was a certain point in my life where I stopped crying. I was numbing out to pain and physical brutality. Do you think that's normal? I mean, it's probably not healthy. It's not healthy, but that is the definition that you're saying of toughening out. Toughen out. Keep getting beaten till you're numb to your feelings and don't react anymore. Don't whine. Don't complain. Don't feel sad. Just fucking feel like shit all the time. Well, I, I think it's 
I just think that, like, you don't think that, like, uh, the average, like, 25-year-old has way less, like, independence than they did 20 years ago. I feel like, I feel like everyone, I mean, I live in LA, so it's. it's Why is that? Let me ask you something. Why is that important to you? Because, um. I don't know. I just, I'm sick of everyone trying to be a clown all the time. Everyone's just like, I feel like everyone I see is, is some creative pursuit or whatever. Yeah. And like, yeah. And it's just like a yeah. big man child. Everyone I hang uh-huh. out with. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. What's the problem with that? Cause it's, I don't know. It's not, I don't think it's helping anyone. I think it's very selfish. Oh, you think being selfish is wrong. Yeah. Oh, try being more selfish. No, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. Like if you go and spend 20 minutes on your artwork and you think that's selfish, do it. You know, if you think like um, napping during the day is selfish, do it. It's really not selfish. It's doing something nice for yourself. And that's something, you know, you have to say like, it's like, it comes with practice. It's like, oh, I deserve to do this for myself. You know, like I deserve to do this. You don't have to rationalize it with a condition. You don't have to say, I deserve this break because I worked hard today. You don't have to fucking rationalize it. I feel like napping right now and I'm going to nap without feeling any guilt. I'm going to do it. It tr- That comes with practice. You have to do it. Yeah. And when you have all these like these kinds of like pontificating this angry kind of like, oh, like fucking old man brain in your head <laughs> going, oh, kids nowadays, 25 year olds don't know how to get car loans. These fucking losers. <laughs> Who cares? That's none of your fucking business. You're 28. Live like a 28 year old. That feels 28 to you. It doesn't. There's no comparison. When you were like, oh, the average 25 year old, I'm like, what average 20? There is no such thing as an (laughs) average 25 year old. There's no consensus and there's no standard or category or expectation that needs to be met uh, as a 25 year old ever. You know, you have to be subjective about your own life. And that does come with selfishness. And selfishness, people think, is a bad term. It's not, it's how you should live. Mind your own business is my point. You should mind your own business all the time. Don't mind other people's business. When you find yourself judging your roommates or other 25-year-olds, be like, oh, I'm talking shit about myself right now. That's 100% what you're doing. You don't have to feel ashamed about not knowing how to do something at age 28. (laughs) You know, you're 28. And you think that like this, uh, you were talking about like the perpetual man child thing. This is like a Peter Pan syndrome thing. We see it among a lot of comedians. It's true. And you're like, oh, they're all clowns. Yeah. Your network is comedians. Of course they're clowns. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you chose to surround yourself by these people by being in this scene. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Comedians have to be perpetual, you know, grown adult children. They have to have perpetual Peter Pan syndrome. It's important. It's important to be in touch with that innocent youthful side to you that child side of you because that child side of you is the fearless one the one that doesn't have any of these anxiety fears got to be in touch with that that's why you like skateboarding that's why Uh you like drawing children like skateboarding children like drawing they're the most at peace when they do that you know why because that's the norm you have to tell yourself that that is the norm to feel that peaceful and aligned. That is the norm. When you start saying, oh, average 25 year old fucking loser, man, that's you not being normal. <laughs> you, know? you know, I pontificate and everything, but then it's, I go, cause like, I, I always can think about like my friends back home and they live normal lives. I got jobs and a house and family. Okay. And I go, okay, that's nice. I would kill myself if I had that right now. If I was okay. back home yeah. with a wife and family in a house yeah. and working a job, it might yeah. be peaceful, but I would yeah. drink myself to death probably. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I can't do that. Yeah. And it's very hard to leave everything you know, drive across the country with no money and then start yeah. over. So it's, I, it is. you know, it, yay for yeah, me. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, but also with the whole suburban lifestyle that your friends have. No, like, don't judge them doing that either, because that's not a normal life or a boring life. That's just a different life from yours. 
Those are well, just... it's boring to me. I think I love the fact. I they I to me they seem peaceful and happy. So I I think yeah. that's awesome. I don't judge people about that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just uh, I don't know mm. something about uh, this fucking everyone's creative i feel like everyone's a creative person now yeah they are that is the truth that is yes they are you know my grandfather my maternal grandfather he's like uh, he's you know on his way out so to speak but Mm -hmm. he he was a farmer his whole life from like birth till to to the deathbed farmer farmer no education illiterate farmer okay my grandfather is a hoarder. He's like a like a mild hoarder. Like if I give him, I'll bring him. He likes sweets. So I'll bring him like cookies and chocolates and stuff. He'll mm-hmm. eat the contents and then he'll save the boxes. Like he <laughs> loves saving the box. And then he'll put the box in another box and he'll put like receipts, like fold them neatly and put them in the box. That's my grandfather being creative. He's not an artist. He never claimed to be a fucking artist. But that's him exhibiting creativity, enacting creativity. Everybody is creative, Killian. And there's nothing wrong with it. There are some people who make creativity their identity and say, I'm an artist and this is what I do for my work and my job and my living. There are people who do that. But generally speaking, every fucking human being on earth is creative. You have to accept that. That's just a fact. For sure. But then the, but they all trying to get jobs. I don't know. They're all trying. I feel like there's no, everything's everybody now. Like everything's for everybody. It, there's no subculture anymore. There's no. Like, no, these are all generalizations that you're making up right now. And I think you're saying them because uh, again, you want to be that, but you're afraid to be that. So it's easier to talk shit about it and make excuses and then confirm that you don't have to be that because it's shit. I think that's what's happening right now. You don't have to do that. It's really, it's exhausting. Genuinely, what you're doing to yourself is exhausting. You don't have to do it. Just do, just do your work and mind your own business. That's all you got to do. Try focusing on that. And I think you'll end up finding ways of making money with what you do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I think your artwork is genuinely meaningful. It's like freakish. You know, like your artwork is so freakish. I'm like, this is freaky shit. And it's hilarious. And it's so like, it's like beyond absurd. It's like a very specific idiosyncratic kind of absurdity that I think is original to you. It's unique to you. And I think you should keep drawing. And I think you should put out a book, you know, and I think even when you like pontificate, like going off like generality, subcult, all this fucking talk that you have, I think maybe in a way you're trying to figure out, well, where do I belong? I think in that way, it's good. You could be productive in that way. It's like, okay, I'm not into that. I'm not into this, but I am into this. This is where I feel like I can fit in. And this is where I feel like I belong. This is where I feel like there's a way for me here. Find that, I would say. Because it's good to know what you don't want, I think. I don't think that's bad at all, in fact, now that I think about it. So, yeah. Fucking know what you don't want, but also know what you do want. Maybe that's mm-hmm. my point. Yeah? All right. Yeah, write yeah. that down. Be like, oh, this, these are my terms, not my non-negotiable terms. Write it out as a bullet point. I did that recently, and I stuck it up on my wall, and it felt really good. I was like, if I ever get a job, these are my terms, and these are my non-negotiables. Otherwise, I'm not going to work that fucking job. And it felt really, really liberating to do that. So, okay. yeah, try that out. Okay, since this is a K-drama uh, podcast, I'm going to ask you a few questions based on a specific K-drama called Jealousy Incarnate. And you just answer, like, what would you do if you were this character in this situation? Okay, okay. simple enough. All right. Let's say you're a weather reporter on a news station. Your name is Nadi, And you're hired on a freelance basis, Okay. You're paid like less than $100 per TV appearance. It's a really like not a good situation for you economically, all right? The news producer, okay, he's super misogynistic and he's always telling you to stuff your skirt to make your ass appear bigger on screen. And he tells you to stick out your chest more for the camera. And it's making you like do all these weird moves physically when you're just trying to report the weather. What do you do? 
uh, how bad do I need the money? Am I fucking gonna be homeless? Mm-hmm. I'd probably do it. You just keep doing it. I'd probably do it. Yeah. yeah. I try to milk every cent of that place. Yeah. But I'm not a girl, so I don't know. Cause like, I would totally, uh, if someone wanted to stuff my pants as a, as a comic, I would totally do that. I don't give a shit. No. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. I get right a BBL. If it meant, okay. If it meant a hundred grand a year. Woo. Okay. Okay. All right. Got it. All right. Let's say uh, you're this hotshot, arrogant MC slash news anchor. You're a guy now. Your your name's Huashin, and you come from a lot of wealth, and you graduated a top university, and you're this fucking big shot. And this naughty chick had a crush on you for three years, and you were fully aware of it, but you ignored her because you're just not into her, right? One day, while helping you with your wardrobe fitting before a shoot. Nadi starts feeling your chest, like she's like touching your chest. And then she says to you that she thinks you have breast cancer. What do you do? I have to call my doctor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Immediately, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah, the next day, probably. You would take and her I'd word be for like, it. Well, how would you know? Also, oh. I'm a guy. Can guys get breast cancer? Yes. I probably can. think she's crazy. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. But you would still call your doctor. Sure. If she gave me a <laughs> legitimate reason, if she just said, oh, you have you have breast cancer, I'd go, yeah. why do you think that? And if she yeah. didn't tell me an actual reason, I'd be like, all right, well, we're going to find a new wardrobe person because you're a fucking <laughs> nut. <laughs> okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay. All right. Let's say you're the same guy. You're hushing again, right? Turns out, Nadi was right. You do have breast cancer and you need to get treatment. But whenever you go to the hospital, you're sitting in the waiting room full of other like middle-aged women. All the patients are in like pink scrubs. You have to wear the pink scrubs too. It's humiliating because you're known in your social circles for being very macho. What do you do? I have to wear pink scrubs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I'd just probably be, uh, I mean, I personally wouldn't care, but if I'm this arrogant DJ guy, yeah, then I'd probably have to go out of my way to make it known that I'm not uh, a, a, a sissy. <laughs> How? How would you make that known? Um, burp a lot. I don't know. Just like, be a guy, <laughs> like, Comment on the women. Burp a lot. Heavy lifting. Okay. Now, see, now I understand what your definition of masculinity is. It's burping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah just being a real man, you know? That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a pair of balls? Let's hear you burp. Yeah. 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 That's what it is. Okay. Got it. All right. Very good. All right. Let's say, let's say you're naughty now. You're that girl. Okay. Like I said, you had a crush on Hwashin for three years, but he never looked your way, not once, okay? But one day, his best friend, Cheng Wan, who was a very wealthy heir to a corporate conglomerate, shows an interest in you. But you still like Hwashin. What do you do? Um, I'd go on and I'd try to go out on a date with the corporate guy. Yeah. That's a nice free dinner. Mm. That's a fun experience. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would take I'd take the ride. Mm. And then okay. maybe Dickhead sees me going up the ladder. Yeah. Goes, oh wow, she's got some value, you know? Like oh. maybe I overlooked it. Uh-huh. Fucking got it. Okay. Fascinating. Okay. Last question. Let's say you're Hushin, the dude, okay? The breast cancer guy. You find out that your best friend Chung Wan likes Nadi. But suddenly you find yourself liking Nadi too. What do you do? <laughs> what is this? Uh, I'd probably I'd probably swoop in, but like 
I'd probably, yeah, I'd probably swoop in, at, but real low key, so he doesn't know. And that way, the seeds planted. So even if she does go on a date with him, she's gonna be like, ah, whatever. I'm gonna go with the uh, the other dude because I've liked him for years. Wow. And then, but uh-huh. it, but then if the rich guy is like winds up winning, then damn, lesson learned. <laughs> very good all right very good very good that's it that's the end of the thing (laughs) thank you thanks sir thanks for making time man absolutely this was fun as hell